Stellen, das übernehme ich heute. Wir sind hier in Oslo in dem Studio, in dem das neue Zero Man's Album Sizex abgemischt worden ist. Ja, und ich wünsche euch viel Spaß bei dem Interview. Das ist richtig. Ja, genau so. Well, actually, Stefan Roth should be uh, sit here and ask you some questions. Uh, if you have the opportunity to meet a band, what would you like to talk about? Oh, it depends. Yeah. Where. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're kind of nerds when it comes to, uh, we're still like the, you know, when you start a band and uh, you're like, I don't know, 16, it's all you think of is what kind of gear you want to play and what kind of gear you want to use and how do you make that sound and why does this album sound like this and we're kind of still like that. Actually. Still like that. It's the same thing about when you go to concerts, when you play yourself, when you do so many shows, Within the year, uh, it comes to a point where you get kind of sick and tired of, of music. So uh, sometimes you go to shows and you you watch, you know, performance. You watch how they do things live, how they choose to perform, and stuff like that. It's sometimes more interesting than the actual show. Mm -hmm. Which is a dangerous thing, though. But it happens, and it's a kind of nerdy thing. But we're still into that. Yeah, it's, I guess it'd be an obvious choice, though. To, uh, but I guess, I guess you would like to meet Trent Reznor, I guess, and have yeah. a little chit chat about the the kind of recording process. Absolutely. Because that's kind of a, a extraordinary thing. I mean, I just know they they kind of started this scene um, sounding as good as as good as it does. I mean like in a uh, different way. Yeah, in a different way from the from the previous industrial sounding stuff, I mean. But we were fortunate enough to uh, to have a, a little visit up at Charlie Clauser's house in, in in Hollywood actually. And that was kind of fun. The keyboard player for for Nine Inch Nails. Mm. That was kind of fun. What about the patch mode? That would be uh, an interesting I actually met them once but uh, mm. it was just a kind of a short 10 minute meet and greet thing before it's showing Copenhagen. So, uh, you know, you only have that much time. Um, well, so you, cool. if, you, if you would meet them, you would talk, you would talk to me about music because I don't really yeah. think they know much about art. If well, Alan Wilder, know that they don't know much about gear. <laughs> if Alan Wilder was still in, oh, you yeah. could talk to him. Absolutely. I guess. But uh, I don't think they are. It's more like the musical industry. It's actually, you know, for us it's kind of because uh, we produce our albums ourselves and stuff, so we would actually have more advantage of meeting people like Terry Date and like the Wallace brothers and, you know, Flo people that, producers, yeah, producers yeah. engineers that kind of made uh, mass selling albums and how they come up with the ideas they, they do come up with. That would kind of be actually really interesting for us. We like that stuff. Yeah, we kind of. Yeah, that's sort of why we're in the business too, because <laughs> we're kind of kids still when it comes to how stuff kind of sounds and stuff. You just uh, came back from a 40 gigs tour in America that's with right. Pink Face and My Life with a Thrill Kill Kite. You toured uh, extensively with Project Pitchfork in Germany, I guess. Uh, do you talk about private things uh, too when you are so close together for a longer time? Well. W we're kind of private guys. Within the band, we talk about everything. I mean, we're we're a big family, but you know, what when you have friends, yeah, and you talk personal about personal stuff with friends, you don't go around and talk about that to other people. That's just a common rule. So that being said, to, though, I mean we. With Pitchfork, with the Pitchfork guys, we, we got along really well. I mean, we have Jürgen as our sound guy, so he's kind of a part of the family now, you know. And um, the Pigface thing, you know, touring with those guys. I mean, we toured with Pigface, Frilco Cult, and, and another band called Bile, and we were all like, we were like, 
I don't know, 30, 40 people on tour. Yeah. And that was kind of a, a new experience for us because all those people were so, they were so nice and we such a, a nice harmony within all the bands. Absolutely. And we actually, those people we got to know were really well. I mean, we, we were there with those people on the bus for six weeks. So, of course, I mean, you get to talk about other stuff than just gear. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, absolutely. But actually, that, I thought, I think that tour was kind of an exception. It was, it was, but it was, nice, it's, it's, it was really different because it was the three, the three other bands knew each other from before and they were mm -hmm. kind of a family from before. We were the only outsiders and um, I know they told us in the tour that they were really skeptical. They thought we'd be assholes. Actually. Definitely. <laughs> they saw pictures of us and they thought we were assholes. But we came along really good, really good, and uh, it was just a hell of a good tour. Yeah. Probably one of the best so far. Mm. I think. Uh, when we met us in Tampa, Florida, a few months ago, you didn't finish the album. Right. Uh, size six yet. Uh, what did you do on the album after coming back? It was kind of, the whole thing was kind of weird because we didn't know that we were going to do this American tour and it, we were supposed to be uh, finished with this album in April April or May or something, you know, and this tour just uh, kind of took us away from the whole thing. But I think it was a, it was a smart move, both for us mm -hmm. and for for how the album came out in the end because it's always good. I mean, we were, we were, we're such a, we, we just love to go out and tour and play and meet the fans and for us to do that and then come back to the album I think it was a really smart move. Give yeah. inspiration. Yeah. Because totally. all the basic tracks, I mean all the basics were recorded before we went on tour. Yeah. But was still some additional programming, some guitar stuff, Lots and of vocals, vocals so, yeah. that was still that we still had to do. And um, and it was just good to to put us behind put put what we record it just behind us for a while and just get back to it and listen to it and then we did some changes yeah, yeah. after that definitely had a good good impact just getting away from it a little bit and then you know, tour and get the live perspective mm. it's always good to get distance from the stuff you're doing because you know so hard to focus like when you work on stuff for 12 14 hours a day and you just do it like week in, week out, so it's always a good thing to get distance.